Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Hi girls, how are you? Okay, let's continue our previous lesson, okay, from yesterday. How does force affect moving objects? Today we will talk about force, motion, and friction. Do you remember this slide? Okay, in this sl slide we said before that if you are having, for example, two forces acting in opposite directions and these forces are equal, okay, we will say that these forces are balanced, okay? The balanced forces that are in opposite directions to each other cancel each other. So, the force of the, uh, the red boy will cancel the force of the blue boy. So, there will be no motion. So no motion happens. Why that? Because the force of the red boy was equal to the force of the blue boy and they were in the opposite direction. So they cancelled each other. So we can say that an object will not start moving. An object will not change in speed. An object will not change in direction unless we change the force acting on it. What does this, this mean? Let's say that this boy is having a bike, okay? And this bike sure will not start moving until I apply force, right? Also, this bike will not change in speed if I change my force. If I push the pedal more, if, if I applied more force, it will speed up, right? This is changing in force to change the speed. Also, if he tried to move the handlebar of the bike here, if he tried to move it, he will also be able to change direction. So, I can change the speed of the bike by changing the force, by increasing, for example, the force or in decreasing the force. I can also change the direction, okay, by moving the handlebar. I can, if the, car, uh, if the bike was... Um, not moving, I can make it start moving by applying force. So, an object will not start moving. An object will not change in speed. An object will not change in direction unless we change the force acting on it. Okay, look at this coyote. This coyote is trying to push a rock. And this rock refuses to move. This rock is resisting to move. The resistance in any object to change its motion is called inertia. So what is the meaning of inertia? Inertia is when the object is resisting to change its motion. Okay, so again, inertia is the resistance an object has to any change in motion. Okay, again, what is inertia? The resistance an object has to any change in, in motion. Sometimes when you are uh, with your mother and your mother told you uh, in Carrefour, for example, please uh, try to push the cart for me. You find it uh, at the beginning difficult. Why? Because the cart is resisting you. The cart is refusing to move. This is inertia. Look at these two people. You have this lady and this white man. Which one of them has more items in the cart yes this lady which one of them has more mass in the cart this lady which one will need more force to move the cart this lady so we can say that we need more force to move objects with high mass or with more mass so if i'm having a heavy object i need more force to move it if i'm having light object I need less force to move it. So more force is for, mo to, for more mass. More force for more mass. Now we will talk about friction. Try to rub your hands together. This is friction. So you can say the definition with me. Friction is force. Friction is force. F and F. Friction force. Friction is contact force or non-contact force? Yes, friction is contact force. Friction is force that acts or that happens when two surfaces rub together. Like your hand, you rub your hand together, right? 
So this is friction. So again, what is friction? Force that acts when two surfaces rub together. Force, force that acts when two surfaces rub together. This is friction. Okay, as you see here, there is rubbing happening here between the end of the box or the surface of the box and the surface of the ground, as you see here. And this is cause, causes friction. Friction can make objects slow down. If you kick a ball along grass, will this ball move till uh, no end? No, it will stop. Why? Because of the friction. Because the ball will make friction with the grass, so it will stop. Or it will slow down. So friction can make objects slow down or stop. Also, friction can make objects not even start moving okay so also we say that a lot of friction needs more force do you remember when we said more mass need more force also more friction need more force how is that look at these two boys this boy they are pushing the same box but this boy is pushing the box over a smooth surface and this boy is pushing the box along a rough surface which one which surface will make more friction with the box the rough one why because the rough one has spots and bumpy surfaces and bumpy uh, places so it will rub more with the box so there will be high friction while the smooth surface is smooth okay so it will not make so much rubbing with the box so there will be low friction so what do you think which boy okay need more force to push the box the one on the uh, left or the one on the right you're right the one on the right will need more force why because He's pushing the box along a rough surface, a bumpy surface, with high friction. So high friction need more force. Less friction need less force. The amount of friction depends on, means high friction or low friction depends on two things. The object's surface or the object's mass. How that? Let's talk first about the object's surface. So again, the amount of friction depends on the object surface. Look at here. If you have two surfaces, here the grass and here is the snow. Which one is rough? The grass. And which one is smooth? The snow. So, which, one, which boy will have more friction? with the ground yes number b why or letter b why because the grass is rough surface so there will be much rubbing between the boy and the grass so this is a lot of friction while the other boy sliding on the snow has less rubbing between the boy and the snow so this is less friction so if you have a rough surface the rough surface will make more rubbing okay so this this causes a lot of friction while the objects with smooth surface will not make so much rubbing so there will be less friction okay this is the first thing we said that the amount of friction means the friction is high or low depends on the object surface and we talked about it already and the object's mass. If I asked you to push a big box of books, which is very hard to move, very heavy, what will happen? You will find that this box is pressing against the floor. It's heavy on the floor. So you will need more force to push it. 
because this box is heavy it's pressing over the floor it's pressing against the floor so there will be more rubbing between the box and the floor this is causes more friction again if you are pushing a giant box of books something heavy okay the heavy object presses against the floor or it's heavy on the floor so the rubbing will be more so you need more force to push it so this is more friction while if I told you to push a box of feather it's very light so it will be easy to move right when it's easy to move that mean it's not pressing so much against the floor or it's pressing against the floor with less force so there will be no much rubbing and there will be less friction okay how can i decrease the friction how can i make the high friction surface become low friction surface it's easy try to use oil or wax this will make the this will make the surface smoother how's that look at this boy this boy wants to play in the kitchen want to slide across the ground in the kitchen okay but there is a friction between him and the floor what he should do now he must put oil or wax like this animal you see this animal is gliding or sliding over the floor why because there is oil so the surface is so smooth and there is less friction also when you are trying to comb your hair and you find it hard to comb your hair you you put what you put oil or cream why to decrease the friction to make the friction becomes less so you can comb your hair easily okay let's solve the checkpoints together what causes objects to move or what causes moving objects to stop moving the answer is one word what is what is the thing that you can apply on objects to move or you can apply on objects to stop them from moving it is force yes the forces can causes can cause objects to move or it can causes moving object to stop moving the second question is what is friction we said what is the meaning of friction F friction force friction is force force that act yes force that acts between two surfaces rubbing together okay so friction is force that acts when two surfaces rub together till here we finish the lesson I hope that you understood the lesson well uh, thank you for your listening and please don't forget your homework and goodbye